Good afternoon. What a wonderful tribute, especially to someone who was only a few months short of 100, that we have all of these people here. It means she continued to make friends, as I've been told by everyone, throughout her life to people of all ages. Her contemporaries are not here in, in body, right? but she and they will be with us forever. I begin with words of the Psalms. Adonai ma adam vateda ehu ben enosh vatechashvehu. Adam la hevel dama, yamav ketzel over baboker yatsitz vachalaf le erev yimoleo viavesh. Tashev enosh ad daka vatomer shuvu vene adam, lu chachmu yas kiluzot, yavinu la acharitam. Kilov moto ye kacha kol, lo ye raid acharav kavodo. Shamar tam ur e yashar, ki acharit ish shalom. Pode adonai nefesh avadav, velo yeshmu kol hachosim bo. God, what are we that you have regard for us? What are we that you are mindful of us? We are like a breath. Our days are like a passing shadow. We come and go like grass, which in the morning shoots up, renewed, and in the evening fades and withers. You cause us to turn to dust, saying, Return, O mortal creatures. Would that we were wise, that we understood whither we are going. For when we die, we carry nothing away. Our glory does not accompany us. Mark the wholehearted, and behold the upright. They shall have peace. Death has taken our beloved Fanshan. Our friends grieve in their darkened world. In their silence, there is lamentation. In their tears, there is loneliness. Lost in their sorrow, may they find the presence of loving friends. Hear them, O God, be with them. For Fanshan's love that united us in life and which death cannot sever. For her companionship that we shared along life's path and which continues through the tenderness of memory. For the gifts of her heart and mind that brought us joy and happiness and is now a precious remembrance. For all these and more, we give our thanks to God. In this time of grief, we listen to the voice of our sacred scriptures that brings us the ever new message of God's nearness. It tells us of our kinship with the Creator, in light as in darkness, in joy as in sorrow, in life as in death. This is the 23rd Psalm in the original Hebrew, and then I'm sure many, most of you know it. Feel free to join in in the English. Adonai roi lo echsar, bino tedeshe yarbitseni, alme menuchot yanachaleni, nafshi yeshovev yancheni bemagle tzedek lemaan shimo, gam ki elech begeit salmavet lo i ra ra ki ata imadi, shiftecha umishantecha hema yanachamuni, ta aroch lefanai shulcha neged sorerai, di shanta vashemen roshi, Kosi Ravaya, Ach Tov Vachesed Yer Defuni Kol Yame Chayai, Beshavti Bevet Adonai, Le Orech Yamin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul, he guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And this is Psalm 15. Lord, who may abide in your house? Who may dwell in your holy mountain? 
those who are upright, who do justly, who speak the truth within their hearts, who do not slander others or wrong them or bring shame upon them, who scorn the lawless but honor those who revere God, who give their word and, come what may, do not retract, who do not exploit others, who do not take bribes. Those who live in this way shall never be shaken. My friends, of the hundreds of funerals I have done in half a century by now, I don't recall more than you could count on your fingers, people who were a hundred or just on the verge of it. Admea Esrim is a classic Jewish blessing. You should live to be 120, which is what the Bible says Moses lived to be. But of course, we don't. Our beloved Fanshan was in her 100th year and just about just months away from her 100th birthday. I doubt that makes it easy to say goodbye. Easier because we know she had a full life. And yet no one who knew her ever, well, those who knew her for long term in your lives, you never remember a time when she was not there. She was a devoted family member. Family is what she was proudest of. In fact, I understand when she went up to Fort Worth, which she did with some regularity, and went into Yogi's Deli, uh, she was uh, always happy to point out, I'm the mother. <laughs> Moreover, I understand she always had lots of friends of all ages. And yet none of us goes on forever. More to the point, many who do live to ripe age have had long-term cruel diseases, and not infrequently dementia. Fan, as most of you as friends knew her, did not have such a charmed life that she never suffered from anything. Nobody does. Right? But she did pretty well. She had her pains and no doubt her disappointments. Uh, her dear husband, Simon, had a long life, but she's been a widow now for 18 years, as I count, but uh, you know, a couple of decades. They were married, though, for 56 years. Imagine having a 56-year marriage and not having started it when you were five, right? And then living beyond your spouse for another 18 years. But the bitterness of that loss was diminished by the love of Joel and Yogi and daughters-in-law, children and grandchildren, and now great-grandchildren. She uh, reminisced about all of that and had a wonderful time being close with all of you. I understand even with the great-grandchildren, she was a regular partner on the telephone. Furthermore, I am told Fan was still driving into her 90s. And though someone had to take her up to Fort Worth for Thanksgiving, she wasn't driving lately. She was there with family and she had all her faculties this year. And until just a few weeks ago, was still enjoying playing bridge with friends. Finally, yet another blessing, her final disease was relatively brief. She did not suffer horribly. Who among us would not uh, take that as a promise right now if it were offered? Make it to almost 100 and have all your faculties about you. As you know probably better than I, Fan was a Texas girl through and through. She was born Fanshawn Schwartz in Hillsboro and spent early years in Malone before the family moved here to Waco. So she was the proud product of local schools and of Temple Road of Shalom, which she has been active in over many, many decades now. And before full maturity, 
She attended the University of Texas, where she enjoyed being an SDT. Not too long after college, she fell in love with Simon, recently back from World War II. They had a good life here in Waco, raising Yogi and Joel, who of course married Leslie and Ricky. That was a thrill. And what mother does not get thrilled by becoming a grandmother? So four grandchildren, and now six great-grandchildren. Sweet. And in fact, they called her Sugar. Waco has been growing in recent years, I know, but perhaps even now, and certainly in those early days of their marriage, and the kids growing up, you could know just about everybody who was anybody, and she did. She loved to cook and to entertain, and she was civic-minded. It's been a few years, I suspect, but some of you will recall that she was not only involved with her kids in their education, but became president of the PTA for four years. That's being a glutton for punishment. That's pretty good. <laughs> she was a leader of the March of Dimes, of the Cancer Crusade, and of the United Way's Action Committee. The term that struck me as Yogi was telling me about Fan is that she was very obviously a people person. Why, in recent years as a widow, did she not move wherever to Fort Worth? Well, because she also had family here where she'd always been comfortable and had all of these friends and the country club and the temple and all, you know, her doctors and, you know, all the things that make home home continued to be hers to the end. So that's the beginning, the bare outline of a portrait of what the final chapter of Proverbs in the Bible calls a woman of valor, trusted and loved by her family, honored by friends and community. Family members will add some more personal brush strokes to the portrait. So I wanna call forward Yogi on behalf of one generation and then Robin Regan and Erin McIntosh uh, as granddaughters for the coming generations. Yogi. Thank you. First off, I'd like to thank four women who took care of my mother for the last three or four years, Gloria Guerrera, Eva Cruz, Maria Suarez, and Rachel Sias. Appreciate you very much. I want to thank all of you for coming to celebrate the life of an extraordinary woman. I know it's the only woman you will ever meet named Fan John. She lived an unbelievably full life, and we're grateful for the 99 years we had with her. She was a devoted wife, mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother, who took care and, ple and pleasure in caring for helping them, us, ourselves, and helping others. As the rabbi said, she was born in Hillsborough in 1924, 424, 24, she was proud to say that, and moved to the small town of Malone at the age of 12. She was an only child and lived with her parents behind her father's dry goods store, uh, and eventually moving to Waco where she would live for 80 years. As a young child, she spent her summers at Camp Waldemar, graduated from Waco High and attended the University of Texas where you could say she started our family's obsession with burn orange. She was an active member in the sorority, which at that time was one of four Jewish sororities on campus. In addition to being an avid fan of the Longhorns, she loved the Texas Rangers and the Dallas Cowboys and how thrilled she was to see the Rangers win their first World Series. When home from school one break, she was set up on a blind date with a young man from Chicago. She always claimed her mother made her go but something must have gone well because they were engaged shortly thereafter. My parents enjoyed wonderful times together over the 56 years they were married. They had wonderful friends, traveled, raised my brother and myself, but life threw them a curveball when my dad suffered a stroke in his 60s. My mom added dedicated care caretaker to her many roles 
and what a job she did. She never asked for help. He could hoist his wheelchair in and out of the car despite weighing less than 100 pounds herself. When my father passed away in 2004, we worried how she would do. No need for that because she often joked she had a busier social calendar than we did. As you all know, she was a fabulous cook. She, found a, she, she could be found hosting a dinner party or playing bridge at Ridgewood with many friends. Well into her 90s, she would often bake cakes for close friends, special occasions for fun. My mother never met a, a stranger and was, she was able to rate, relate to those young and old. And, and as the rabbi said, when visiting my restaurant, she could walk around the floor for hours talking to as many customers as possible, <laughs> telling them she was my mother. She was a, a very proud mother and I'm a very proud son. She was also thrilled a few months back when her young friends, as she called them, threw her 99 and a half uh, birthday party. This is just an example of her ability to connect with people no matter what stage in life they were. Okay. Hmm. okay. In 2017, my oldest daughter, I'll get it here in a minute, was recovery, I think I can get it, was recovering from surgery following a cancer diagnosis. I recall a typical sugar story when we were waiting for the results from the pathologist. She said, I've got, I'm, I've got good news. I'm throwing the biggest New Year's Eve party I've ever seen. When she came, we came back with good news, and she did. Okay. Okay, it's really impossible to put into words with... With what someone like her has meant to all of us. Hmm. I practiced this and it never did this. Okay. My wife lost her mother when she was 19. Although it is impossible for anyone to replace that loss, she became a wonderful second mother to her. Okay. My mother was one of the strongest, sharpest, and most caring people I've ever met. I'm the luckiest. <laughs> to have been raised and loved by her, to have her in my corner made me feel like I could accomplish anything. She was all of our greatest cheerleaders, and it is one of the things I will deeply miss. In instances I fell short, it didn't matter because she would always be there with unconditional love and support. To say she will be missed doesn't quite do justice. Do it justice. She had a full and wonderful life. And we are the luckiest to be a part of it. Thank you. Robin. Okay. I had not really planned to do this despite having a piece of paper. Oddly enough, once someone starts making it past 90 and gets to 99, you start to think they're immortal. I don't presume to know what there is beyond this life, but being that I spoke at my grandfather's funeral and knowing the memory she had, I would hate to enter this next phase with her mad at me. <laughs> I came up with the name Sugar. To me, as the first grandchild, she was just that, sweet as sugar. Most of the time that meant me being with both her and my grandfather, soaking up all that attention and likely getting a lot of what I wanted. Some might say that made me spoiled. I would like to think it made me someone who would never settle for anything less than what they wanted for me, which was the best. She demanded nothing less. That type of love knew no bounds. She was tough as nails. There's no way around that. 
If she was happy with you, you knew it. And if she wasn't, you knew that too. There wasn't much in between. I remember being at my grandfather's funeral service and she asked for 57 roses to celebrate their 57 years of marriage. She leaned over to tell me that and then told me to count them. <laughs> she never missed a birthday or an anniversary or a date of anything significant in anyone's life. Not because she had to, but because she wanted to for the people she loved. Her drive to stay current, young, and active was unparalleled. When life left her no with no more friends, she made new ones. If she needed or wanted activities, lunches, bridge games, she coordinated them. Some of you might have even seen my dad moonlight as her bartender. Her dinners, desserts, and special meals were legendary. Sugar would always say, I have no idea how I have lived this long which is why today is so strange. It makes sense in everyone's mind. She was never going to live forever. One of my favorite things about her was that she loved Frank Sinatra. And in her later years, she loved Michael Buble. One of her favorite songs was My Way. It was the song that played during their 50th wedding anniversary celebration video. And the lyrics, quite honestly, provide a soundtrack to her life. And now the end is near, and so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say it clear. I'll state my case of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I've traveled each and every highway. And more, much more than this, I did it my way. Thank you all so much for being here today. And Aaron. <clears throat> I want to thank you all for being here today and speaking on behalf of my sister Haley and myself. Um, most of you knew her as Fan, but to us she was always Sugar. And what a fitting name. In fact, over the past decade, she often would say to my kids, I want you to always remember your sugar, and I hope I added sugar to your life. I'm here today to tell you all that she absolutely did sweeten our lives and everyone's that were lucky enough to know her. I was fortunate enough to have a grandmother who was also a best friend. I'm not quite sure when our relationship became so close or so special, but I'm grateful all the same. I remember my friends on so many occasions would laugh when we would be out at different functions or sporting events and my phone would light up with Sugar's face and ring and ring and ring again. And sometimes she would call back two more times just to make sure she told my friends hello or to tell me one more thing or to wish one of my kids good luck on something. This is just one of the many ways that my grandmother was so thoughtful and caring. Sugar had so many amazing qualities. My grandmother never met a stranger and was friendly to everyone. She also happened to have a terrific memory, the best memory of anyone I have ever met. Even right before she passed away, she was recalling events from 1954 during my dad's childhood, memories that even he had forgotten. Sugar truly was one of the most caring people I've ever known, and caretaking came so naturally to her. The dedication and the love that she showed towards my grandfather for the last 20 years of his life was remarkable and inspiring to witness. She was also often baking for friends in need, calling and checking in on those who had been sick. I recall the time when I was a freshman in college and living in a dorm I had been very sick and remember waking up to the faraway sound of my grandmother's voice calling my name. And the calls got closer. Erin, Erin, where's Erin's room? Do you know where Erin is? She busted into my room, sat down on the bed and hugged me and told me she was taking me home and she was going to get me better. She then grabbed my bag, loaded it and me into the car with my grandfather and drove me home. During the departure, she made sure to point out all her favorite college hangouts to my grandfather and me. 
I giggled in the back seat as my grandfather asked if every spot was her favorite and was there anywhere she hadn't been while at UT. My grandmother showed such love and support toward my sister and me. And this is probably the thing I appreciate and will miss the most. She was our biggest fan. We both have voicemails saved from her that we will treasure forever with her commenting on how proud she was of us, how much she loved us, and how special we are. Sugar's constant love and support not only brightened my days, but also validated and uplifted me in some of my darker ones. She listened to me without judgment and gave me advice when I needed it. I'm not sure she truly realized how much her opinion mattered to me. She always had such wonderful ideas and was so sensible and wise. Watching my grandmother love my two children and their cousins was, an an was another enormous gift. She lit up when she saw them or heard about their accomplishments. She felt such pride in being their great grandmother and she made sure that they always knew how much their sugar loved them and was proud of them. She was an amazing woman who lived each day to its fullest. She loved hard and well, and we, so f we feel so blessed to have called her ours. We will miss you every day, sugar. We love you forever and always, and we will do our best to make you proud. Give Papa a hug for us. Thank you. There's an old saying that says, words from the heart go to the heart, and we have all gotten the message, and thank you, all three of you, beautifully done. Oh God, you give us loved ones and make them the strength of our life, the light of our eyes. They depart and leave us on a lonely way. But you are the living fountain from which healing flows. To you, the stricken look for comfort and the sorrow laden for consolation. O oh God, we see life as through windows that open on eternity. We see that love endures and the soul endures as you, O oh God, endure forever. We see that the years are more than grass that withers, more than flowers that fade. They weave a timeless pattern in a world that is the dwelling place of your love and glory. Next, I'm going to read a classic Jewish prayer of mourning called El Malay Rachamim, mal translated, but the beginning of it is, O God, full of mercy. Uh, and then we're going to move on to the Kaddish, another classic Jewish prayer of mourning. The first one talks about we really miss this person and we thank God for their life. And the second one says, but we know you're still there, O God, give us more more people, more relationships to fill our lives with meaning. So we express our faith as we conclude. Please rise for El Malay Rachamim and Kaddish. El Malay Rachamim, Shochen Vamromim. Hamse Menucha Nechona Tachat Kanfe Hashechina. Im Kadoshim Utahorim Kazohar Harakia Mazhirim Et Nishmat Fan Shan Schwartz Florsheim Chahalcha La Olama Baal Harachamim Yasti Raha Beseter Kanafav La Olamim Vietzwar Vietzwar Hachaim Et Nishmata Adonai Hunachalata Vetanuach Vishalom Al Mishkava Vinomar Amen. Compassionate God eternal spirit of the universe. Grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Fan, who has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let her find refuge forever in the shadow of your wings, and let her soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. God is her inheritance. May she rest in peace, and let us say, Amen. If you know the Kaddish, feel free to join in. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemei rabba v'yalma divrach yirutei v'yamlich malchutei 
Vechayechon, Viomechon, Vechaye de Chol Beit Yisrael, Baagala, Vizmanka Riv, Vimru, Amen. Yehe Shemei Rabam of Arach, La Alam, Ula Ome Omaya, Yit Barach, Viet Tabach, Viet Paar, Viet Romam, Viet Nase, Viet Hadar, Viet Ale, Viet Halal, Shemei de Kudsha, Barichu, La Elam in Kol Birchata, Vishirata, Tush Bechata, Venechamata, Dami Ran Baalma, the Imru Amen. Yehe Shalama Rabba Min Shamaya Vachayim, Alenu Vaal Kol Yisrael, the Imru Amen. O Ser Shalom Bim Ramav, Huya Aser Shalom, Alenu Vaal Kol Yisrael, the Imru Amen. May God, who makes peace on high, make peace, we pray, in our hearts and bring comfort to all who are bereaved. And we say, Amen. Amen. On behalf of the family, I've been asked to let everyone know that uh, they are going and you are invited to join them to Ridgewood Country Club to share some memories and no doubt a little bit to eat and drink. So uh, join them. That concludes, however, this formal part of the service. Share some memories. Amen. <laughs>